Thanks, Sarah Jane, and welcome to the Daily Climate Show. Well, here's what's coming up for you now. No coming back, a warning from the Environment Agency that some communities will need the, to plan their retreat from the coast in the face of rising sea levels. Fears grow for the safety of a British environmental journalist missing in the Amazon. And insulate your homes to reduce heating bills and emissions, the head of the CBI tells us that the government must act now. Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show, where we report on the changes happening to our world and hear from the leaders who are trying to deal with those changes and, of course, also hear from the people coming up with the solutions. Now, a British journalist has gone missing in a remote part of the Amazon rainforest. Dom Phillips was travelling with a Brazilian expert of indigenous people. Now, the pair had reportedly received a number of threats from loggers and miners in the region. Mr Phillips has reported in Brazil for more than 15 years and was travelling with Bruno Arroja Pereira, who's a former government official whose job was to protect Brazil's uncontactable tribes. Well, the pair were travelling around the Amazon rainforest near the triple border of Peru, Colombia and Brazil, researching a book about environmental issues. They were last seen over the weekend in Javari Valley of the Amazon state near the border with Peru, a region which is home to the most uncontactable indigenous people in the world. Well, they set off to Italia de Noche by boat on what should have been a two-hour trip but never made it. Well, Sky's leader Dowd has been speaking to Dom Phillips' sister. Well, in spite of Dom Phillips living in Brazil, he was very close to both his sister and his brother in the UK. They were in um, direct contact all of the time, really, even on the trips um, that he frequently took in the Amazon, because he's writing a book uh, currently at the moment. And they've described to me that they feel anxious, desperate, worried, but still hopeful that both Dom and his guide will be found. But they are concerned for their safety. Um, Dom is a freelance journalist who is shining a light, if you like, on a very politically sensitive issue in Brazil um, involving the struggles of the indigenous people there um, against deforestation and um, illegal logging. And the family believe there were also drug traffickers in the area when the two disappeared as well. So they are uh, very concerned. And um, this is what Sean, uh, his sister, had to tell me. And she was interviewed alongside her partner, Paul. He, he's lighting up, uh, highlighting, spotlighting this area. Uh, and I want, I want the eyes of the world on it. And I want him and Bruno to be found. Yeah, but our worry is that they've been they've been abducted by somebody who uh, who wanted to silence the the, the 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 exposure that they were bringing to illegal activities in, in the area. He's full of vitality. I see him, you know, as a uh, he's my older brother. I look up to him. I love him. Oh. Dom's sister really feels that every minute counts in this case, and given those political sensitivities with what he was doing, they don't feel like the Brazilian government is doing enough to find the men. At the moment, they feel it is only the indigenous communities searching for them at the moment. Um, they're not having any direct contact um, with what is going on with the authorities there, and they want to see the Brazilian army brought in to try to find the men. I did ask them what contact they'd had with British authorities and they said um, that the family here in the UK had had no direct contact with them, but they hope uh, that the British authorities will be doing all that they can to help. Lisa Dowd with that update. Now on to some of today's other climate news now. And the head of the Confederation of British Industry has urged the government to upgrade insulation in UK homes is in a bid to reduce massive energy bills. Now, Tony Danker says around £5.2 billion needs to be invested every year until 2035 in order to properly insulate the country's homes, which lose heat faster than anywhere else in Europe. And that could save homeowners £500 a year. 
Now, heating the UK's drafty housing stock creates about 14% of the country's carbon emissions. That's according to the Committee on Climate Change. Some people have turned round to what's happened with events in the Ukraine and Russia and said, gosh, you know, this proves that all that green stuff is the wrong stuff at the wrong time. It won't help people. Actually, the opposite is true. We've just seen fossil fuels go up by three times where they were a year ago. We've just seen people thrown to the mercy of global politics and war when it comes to paying for their own energy bills. That's why we're saying today that actually we now need to do energy efficiency properly in this country. We've done it in other parts of the world, we've done it in other countries in Europe, but we've never really delivered it properly in the UK. And you know, just getting some of our most inefficient homes up to a basic standard of energy efficiency would save bill payers £500 a year. A new report calls on the government to help fund the UK's small-scale fishing fleet switch to more sustainable engines. Researchers from the University of Hull say that although technology exists for electric or hybrid engines, the current licensing system is preventing the uptake. The report recommends more research into low-carbon propulsion systems and says harbour authorities should consider future electrification when upgrading infrastructure. President Joe Biden has waived tariffs on solar panels from four Southeast Asian nations for two years. It's to serve a bridge while manufacturing in the US ramps up. The White House says the Defense Production Act would also be used to increase manufacturing of building insulation, heat pumps and equipment for clean electricity generated fuels. The move comes in response to concern over a freezing of solar projects nationwide. That's part of the administration's plans to fight climate change. Now, warning from the head of the Environment Agency that rising heat levels caused by climate change will inevitably mean some coastal communities being forced from their homes. James Bevan was speaking today at the Flood and Coast Conference. In the long term, climate change means that some of our communities, both in this country and around the world, cannot stay where they are. Now, that's because while we can come back safely and build back better after most river flooding, there is no coming back for land that coastal erosion has simply taken away or which a rising sea level has put permanently or frequently underwater. Which means that in some places, the right answer in economic, in strategic, in human terms will have to be to move communities away from the danger rather than to try and protect them from the inevitable impacts of a rising sea level. And our climate change correspondent Hannah Thomas-Peter is at Berlin Gap in East Sussex. It is a stark admission that despite billions of pounds of planned spending, the government and the Environment Agency can't hope to protect every single person's home and business from the relentless march of the ocean and rising sea levels and increasingly frequent, increasingly severe weather events. Uh, the Environment Agency does have an extensive plan to invest in coastal defences and so a large majority of people living near the sea, let's be clear about this, will continue to enjoy their communities but there will be areas where that simply isn't possible. Now what the Environment Agency isn't saying is that all of this change, which sounds very dramatic, is going to happen tomorrow and that they are saying that it's way too early to predict who exactly will get to stay and who will be forced to leave. But there are some communities, uh, like, for example, Fairbourne in Wales, who have already been told by the council that the flood defences can't be kept in place in perpetuity and there is going to have to be some relocation. And I think just more broadly, um, the news today is a great example of how climate change is no longer a problem for the global south, a problem for countries and communities far, far away. The impacts are here. And although this country certainly has the, the infrastructure and the means to adapt, to strengthen against uh, and to protect against the impacts of climate change, there is 
ultimately only so much the government can do.